Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, fish heads. Today is Thursday, May 28th, 2020, and we are back in the shop this morning. The roll-up's up, the sun is shining, the birds are singing, there might be a dog in the background barking at some point during the video, for which I apologize, but they're not in the room, so it should not be overbearing. Got a couple of pieces, just a couple this morning to show you guys, but I want to kind of break down what I was doing to achieve the results that I did on these natural bluegills from Buke Bullshads. And Mike, thank you for the nod on the work. I appreciate that. It's always nice when the creator, founder of these things gives you a nod for, um, for the work that you do. So these are going out to Davis Harlow this morning. They've got three coats on them. Pretty stoked about that. And we'll talk about how I achieved what I achieved on this in just a second. In the meantime, we're going to start out with this little guy. This is the Calico Crappie, and it comes from my collection on, on the website at uh, jekyllbaits.com. So go check that out. This is the fourth piece going out to Dan Clevenger this morning. Um, just a quick, easy spray. And if you don't have stuff like the creature features and stencils can get expensive, you can use other things that are close to achieve the results that you want. And that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about today with these patterns. So also, um, in staying in that kind of a format this weekend, I'm going to be doing a spray set, probably a couple of spray sessions one of which I'm going to be repurposing and customizing uh, an old Strike King Red-Eyed Shad lipless and it is a blue and silver chrome uh, which is also really cool but we're going to be using that as the base layer instead of priming it white so just using minimal stuff to create a brand new look on a bait uh, one of the things that I love to do and one of the things that I love to teach you guys how to do as well. So stick stick around, stay tuned for that. This right here is a throat punch. They're Canadian made. It's a limited series and they are musky and big pipe baits. And this is going out to Brandon. There's a whole lot of bling going on in this and lots of shimmer. Um, I'm playing around with some mica. You guys have asked questions before as to whether or not I use the powdered mica in any of my mixes. And yes, you can do it to achieve a chroming effect, which is what we've achieved here in the background. And I kind of tweaked this. He had asked for a particular pattern and I had showed him different. We, we just, I was not happy with the, with the outcome and the results that I was getting. So I'm like, well, let me play around with a couple of things. He's like, just do whatever it is that you need to do and make it look good. Um, he trusts my, my creative uh, artistic freedom, and he gives that to me most of the time on, uh, on the baits that I make for him. So just some cool stuff, uh, a couple of little stencils on the top, and then a stencil repeat on the sides. Really, the only thing that he asked for was a contrasty pop to this bait, which we certainly have. If you look at that chrome, um, this is a mica pigment, and I have mixed it into the Com Art Opaque Pearlescent, which is just a pearlescent additive. You can do that uh, as long as you keep that thin enough, it will spray for you through um, your airbrush at a fairly high pressure, say 35 to 40. I wouldn't go much lower than that because it'll clog on you. So that's one of the tricks that I use all the time is if you're doing just overlays and quick sprays, do a little higher pressure and as long as you can control where you're spraying you should be able to to handle that these are brule eyes um, very natural looking a lot of times they'll put marbles in here and they're just real plain I wanted to kind of give it a little bit more of a natural eye so that the, the fish can also target on that uh, along with the chrome and then we've got four coats on this because muskies hit hard they're toothy critters so are the pike so on my swim baits, I'm normally putting at a minimum three coats of KPS on it, sometimes four. So um, this is going to be going out probably tomorrow. I'm probably going to dip it maybe one more time. It doesn't add, the, the coats are pretty thin, so it doesn't add all that much to it. But River Slicks, great Canadian, small batch, small company, outstanding musky baits. They're well weighted. Um, they swim very well, and they catch a lot of musky. So... That's the pattern we came up, and the mica pigment in this is a gold pink, which doesn't look gold at all on this. It looks like a very cool bluish shimmer against that black backdrop 
And then the contrast is the white pop on the sides and the stars on the top. These, there is a little and a big, and we're gonna look at both of them, both sides. And this is after three coats. I am gonna be sending this out this morning um, once I clean it up. And I'm gonna show you, this is, this is not the first time I've done this pattern. I do this pattern uh, every once in a while. People really seem to like it as a very natural bluegill. So there's the picture of it. First sent in to me by Joe Montgomery, um, a fellow Arky guy who is a swim bait junkie. Uh, he's also got a little podcast that he's got going on, I think, Twitch. Um, I'll have to fact check that, but Joseph Montgomery um, was asking for a pattern a while back, and he's like, hey, can you do this? This is one of the coolest uh, bluegill that I found. I'm like, yeah, sure. And then to achieve that, and this goes back right back to what I'm talking about with, here's the small one, um, to using what you have to make the coolest results that you, can, that you can make. If you just rip a piece of paper, like these cardboard um, little inserts that I use frequently on a lot of stenciling that I hand cut, that rough edge is going to give you a really cool natural look so that you guys can achieve some pretty decent results and make it look supernatural. Um, bluegill colors are not that difficult to achieve, but remember that everything, especially if it's on a wounded or a distressed bait fish, is going to be a muted color. So anytime you have something that you want to try and mimic naturally, remember that you can also add some pearl white to the colors because generally there aren't fish that are as bright in the water unless you're dealing with saltwater fish uh, and some darters that are not as bright as the colors that come out of our airbrush paints so you can mute that down always with a pearl white and these are the results that are achieved it's just your basic yellow your basic wicked detail colors in sienna sepia and some detail black magenta and that is how it turned out also if you accidentally get paint on these tails take a clean cloth and just after you've don't, obviously you don't want to ever put um, clear coat on the tails they're not meant for it and you can do some harm to them but if you just take a clean rag and wipe down after you're finished putting clear coat on if there's any excess residue paint from where you were spraying, it'll come right off of this tail. These are great tails. So that, my friends, is all the news that's fit to print. Look for the spray sessions. Look for me to be talking about these Dinger Atlases at some point in the near future and probably do um, a spray session on that as well. So thanks, Brian, for the send on those two. You guys have a great day, and I will see you on the next video. Cheers! and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.